Hi, I'm Trisha Morris at Club Scrap with the Tropical Page Kit Assembly Workshop. I cannot wait to make these beautiful pages with you. So let's go ahead and get started by setting aside everything that came in the kit except for the paper. So dump all that out of the way. And here we have our beautiful paper collection. As always, I like to hold the paper in the crook of my arm so I can see it from the top edge and then easily find what I'm looking for. And we'll, we'll pile all of that paper on our trimmer base facing down and then flip the whole pile over when we're done sorting. So the first thing I want you to find is what I'm calling the large leaf print. So go ahead and find one of those. There will be two. Find one and put it face down on your work surface followed by the other print style. This is, I'm just calling this the collage print. So it's kind of hard to name those prints every month. Um, then we're looking for one teal. Now you'll notice there's two shades of blue in this collection. One has a little more green to it, so that's what we're calling teal. And you need, you actually need two of them. So just take both of those teal papers and put them on your work surface. Next, let's find the cut aparts. Now these are smaller pieces of art. I'll print it on one sheet. The first one I want you to use is the one that has this strip on it that says sandy toes and sun-kissed nose that put that face down followed by the cut apart with all the birds on it. We'll flip that over. And then let's go ahead and find two of the blue planes. So these are the, the real true blue, two of those. Then two orange planes. I love this nice, bright, rich orange color. Next, we're gonna find one of the, um, the collage prints. So this is the other one, the second one that we have with all of the greenery on it face down and then add a green plane. Then the large leaf print face down and the final green plane. So that's that's everything we're gonna be trimming. We'll uh, set those to the left. I usually put the, the papers on the left of my trimmer. And then I'm gonna take my accordion pocket file. If you don't have one of these, you can see mine is very, very well loved. It's, I think it's time to freshen up and make another one. And it has the two little um, hook and loop dots on it that correspond with two hook and loop dots on the back of my trimmer. I added those after um, people in classrooms were starting to lose things off the end. They actually accidentally pushed their trimmers past the edge of the table. That's just a small little insurance policy for that. If you don't yet have that, reach out to us at Club Scrap and we'll help you um, make one of those. I have a video tutorial and a little starter kit. Now we have some photo mats. Those should be in your kit as well. We're going to sort those according to the layouts they'll be used in and then file them accordingly. We'll start with three photo mats that are black. Three of them going into pocket one and two. And then one green photo mat in pocket three and four. Find all three of the blue ones. Those are going to go in pocket five and six. And then all the rest, which will be three orange and two green, will be used in pocket seven and eight. Now it's time to begin doing the actual trimming. So I'm going to start out with the paper that's on the top sheet on the stack, which is the large leaf print. And then find the large white flower. We're going to put that in the upper right corner of our trimmer base. And we'll find seven inches. The whole number there, make sure you're not looking at centimeters, but inches. Once you get that measurement, stabilize on the clear bar. Slice it. And both of these pieces are used as is in layout five and six. And I'm just going to place these super large pieces in the pocket as at an angle so that I can still see the numbers on the left side of my organizer here. All right. The collage print. It doesn't really matter which way you put this in the trimmer. Um, if you feel like there's a vertical, maybe the lines should run horizontally. Um, but it's not really going to matter in the end. Uh, let's just trim at 11 and a half. 10 and a quarter, six, and three. All right, take the, the two three inch pieces and we'll place those in pocket seven and eight, still at an angle again. And then this next larger strip will trim horizontally at 11 and a quarter, seven and a half, three and three quarters. These three pieces will be used in pocket five and six, and I'm sorry to tell you there is a little scrap involved here. The next two narrow strips are going to be placed in pocket three and four, and then we'll grab just one piece of the teal that we have um, on our pile. So we're going to trim one at a time, make sure that's all you've got there, and we'll begin by trimming at 11 and three quarters, 
11 and a half, 10 and a quarter, and six and a quarter. Notice I'm stabilizing each time and allowing the paper to accumulate to the right of the trimmer blade without moving it anywhere. Now rotate the piece in the base so it's horizontal and we'll cut at eight and a half, four and a quarter. And then take the two pieces you just made that are the same size and place them in pocket three and four. Now, if I'm going too fast for you, I understand. Just adjust your playback speed to 0.75 or even 0.5 to make it really slow. And this next rectangle that fell to the right of your blade will trim horizontally at six and three. And these two pieces will also go in pocket three and four. And you made a small scrap in the process. That can be thrown away. And this next longer piece will trim horizontally at six. And both pieces can be placed in pocket one and two. Now for the remaining strips, I'll pick them all up. And the wide one, one and two. And these two skinnier ones, five and six. Then grab the next sheet of teal and we'll cut out 11 and three quarter. 10 and three quarters. Eight and four and a quarter. Rotate, and we have quite a few trims here. Uh, the first one is ten and a quarter, eight, and four and a quarter. Okay, this piece is a larger square, then you have a rectangle, and then you have a skinnier rectangle. All three of these pieces will go in pocket three and four. Then you have this one last smaller piece. We're gonna cut that horizontally at three and a quarter and place that in pocket three and four as well. And then there is this small little scrap. I figured that was tolerable. Pick up the next strip. Now this is three and three quarter by 12 right now. And we'll cut out 11 and a quarter seven and a half, three and three quarters. Gather up the three pieces that are the same size, they're squares, and they're gonna go in pocket one and two. Of course, we've made another little scrap. And then finally, we'll take this last piece, trim horizontally at 11 and a half, eight and three quarters, six, and three and a quarter. Gather up the wider piece and the square, both of those go in one and two. The other two squares we used in pocket three and four. Lots of teal going into three and four, right? <laughs> and then there is a small scrap again, sorry about that. And now we have a wide and skinny, they're both gonna be placed in three and four. We've reached cut apart time. And uh, for those who are new, remember that on the corner here, we've got the this little, um, plus sign. I call that like a registration mark or a cut mark. And we want to line that up with the edge of our trimming blade on the trimmer and then remove anything beyond that, that little trimming mark. And you do that on each side of the cut apart. So line up the mark. And now, especially after I make the first cut, I can really see the edge of the blade much better on my trimmer and line that up carefully. Now, if I cut well on the left side at this point, I should be able to put this in the trimmer at 12 inches. I mean, what I'm looking for is just a really nice uh, 12 by 12. And then rotate again. On those larger commercial trimmers, the accuracy isn't quite perfect enough for what I was hoping for. That's why we do this extra stuff. And I'm going to dispose of the uh, scraps here. And then turn this again, making sure the word Sandy Toes is on the right. And we'll cut at 11. And I was just make sure that the blade is going to go right between the art elements. And then 10. Nine and a quarter. Eight and a half. Six and a half. And four and a half. This is where you stop. Got to be careful on this one. Now we have a bunch of pieces to cuts to make in this direction. So I'm going to start, let's see, 
looking for nine and a half, six and a half, and three and a half. Now we have to rotate again. And make sure the word tropical is on your right, and we'll trim at three and a half and two. And now I'm going to place this journaling prompt in pocket one and two. This one, seven and eight. And tropical vibes, that's going to go on five and six. All right, this next piece, with keep life is simple on your right. We'll trim at three and a half and two. Now when you get a tag like this that has these angled lines, we can go right ahead and what I do is place the angled edge that I want in alignment with the blade and I bring the blade pretty close to the paper. And that way I can try to match the perimeter on the angle to the perimeter on the straight edges and just snip that off. And then I rotate a little and I bring that trimmer right down and just slice. I already have, then I have the work done. And then I'm going to file this in pocket five and six. Aloha goes in three and four. Life is simple, just add water, seven and eight. And it doesn't matter what order in the po within the pocket, it's just as long as it's in the pocket. Now we'll trim this piece at two and a half. And the toucan goes in pocket one and two. And then with this one, we'll just make our little triangular angled cuts again to finish up the prep work on the tag. And then we'll put that in seven and eight. Finally, we're going to take, make sure the leaf is on the left and trim at two and a half. The leaf is used in seven and eight. And then two can play this game, one and two. Okay, now we have a bunch of strips that we can pick up. These will be easy to file, no more side cuts or anything. Uh, Paradise Found, three and four. Tropic Like It's Hot, five and six. The Blue Strip, seven and eight. The Orange Strip, three and four. On Island Time, seven and eight. Sandy Toes, one and two. And we can proceed with the final cut apart. This one's a little easier. Again, we have to trim the perimeter using these uh, printed guide marks to help us figure out where to make our first cut here. And then rotate. With those edges removed, just make sure the border strip is on the far right. And we'll begin with our first cut at 10 and a half. Then six and a half, and four, and rotate. Let's trim at ten, and six. Okay, this big guy, seven and eight, this journaling prompt, and then the orange strip that comes with it, three and four. Then we have this wide strip, one and two. We have to do just a little trimming with the birds on the right. We'll just cut at seven and three and a half. This blue piece, seven and eight. The black, this is my happy place, three and four. And then I'm going to grab a scissors here and separate these birds just real roughly here just to get them into two separate elements because this guy goes in three and four, the parakeet, and then the toucan will be used in page one and two. And we, oh, we have one more piece to file. This is, goes in pocket three and four. Now that is it for the trimming. So we can set our trimmer aside and we'll do what we call the dry fit assembly. At this point, and my experienced uh, assembly line scrapbookers know how this works, but I'm going to take this entire stack of paper now and put it to the left of the center of my workspace, take the top sheet and slide it over. That will give me the base for layouts seven and eight. So we're up, we are going to assemble this from the back to the front. So when we're done dry fitting, in other words, placing all the elements on our pages without adhesive, layout number one will be on the top, and then you can go back and do your final assembly in the correct uh, direction. I'm going to remove everything from pocket seven and eight and also turn to the last page of my instructions looking at the bottom here uh, for my assembly tips. 
Now before we get started with putting all the elements in their proper places, I'm going to grab my desktop blotter. This is what I typically do if I'm going to do any work with ink or stamping. I always have the blotter on my work surface. And I'll just show you a little bit about what I did with the masking stencil that came in your kit. I used Club Scraps White Pigment Ink, and this is completely optional. You don't have to do this step, or you can do this differently, a different technique if you wish. Maybe you wanna use spray mists or something else besides just white pigment ink. And notice I'm loading my uh, ink applicator. I do keep one for exclusively for white ink. And then you can apply the ink to the stencil while you hold it in place and if you don't feel comfortable holding it in place on your paper you could always use some painters tape to kind of uh, hold it down with a masking stencil I think the lesson I learned from doing this the first time is that I'm gonna avoid going past the edge that will have what I call the seam in other words when I have to move the stencil over to continue the pattern to the right I'm not gonna I'm just gonna try avoiding going over the edge because the seam can be quite visible. The same at the, on the bottom here. So you can spend as much or as little time on this as you want. A light dusting of ink will work beautifully for this and it will be quite visible. You can't really see much happening now. But anyway, once you're done with that, you just pick up the stencil. There I have my little pattern forming. I could have spent a little more time on it and then move it to the right and repeat that whole process again. Now with one row of my pattern applied on the top page, I'm just going to place that down and we'll continue on together. We don't have to spend too much time on it. Basically when I planned my ink application, I started by placing temporarily the, one of the three inch strips across the bottom, then adding this and putting a little line where my pattern could end. But in fact, it's fading quite nicely, so I could essentially leave this right as it is. Okay, so with these two items placed, I'm going to take this larger uh, parakeet, I think he is, and nest him onto an orange mat. This should fit perfectly. He's going to go right here. Now, another thing I did for an embellishment is, I'll just show you with the um, these umbrellas. Now, these are drink umbrellas, and I just thought they would be a really fun, ideal um, embellishment for our pages. Of course, everything is optional, so if you're not a fan of them, don't worry. I'm gonna open up that drink umbrella, and if you just wanna go ahead and make a margarita or a pina colada and just put the drink umbrella in there and skip it for your embellishment, that's fine. The hit, this is how I used it. So I began by taking scissors and just snipping the little spines of the umbrella from the main toothpick there in the middle. Okay, so all of those pieces are broken off now. And this whole thing can separate out and remove. We, we are going to remove that whole center area. And you can do that real carefully now that it's separated. So I'm just going to gently pull to remove that center section. So now this has been separated from the toothpick and I can apply some glue. I, I use my book binding glue and a needle tip applicator to the back of this piece and I added it, sort of tucked it in behind here. Now I allowed some of those pieces to go off the edge and I just took my page to the trimmer once it was adhered and I chopped off any excess. But I liked the idea of this extending beyond the edge of the page. You can decide placement on that for yourself once, once you're, you know, where I am right now. Okay, so then these two green photo mats are horizontally placed. You're gonna go down into this printed area here. And then to the left of it, um, you can go ahead and either snip or use a craft knife or just hand cut around this. Staple some ribbon to the left of it and place that underneath there. Then on the right side of the layout, the remaining pieces should fit together. So we're gonna uh, run that tropical print across the top here. I misfiled my island on island time in five and six. So I'm going to play, grab that out of the hat and add it. And that's a great reason why we do this, this whole method of um, dry fitting, because that way all the pieces can so get sorted out properly. This find me under the palms goes right over here. Then I'm going to take two of these vertical orange mats Staple some ribbon to the edge of this piece and it gets actually overlaid here along with Life is Simple, just add water. Those are the same width and kind of fit nice in the lower right corner. 
and um, you can fussy cut this leaf element and add it sort of to this leaf area over here. The fussy cutting shouldn't take too long. My other um, palm tree drink umbrella is going to go tucked behind this. And I finished off too with one of these adorable little palm tree charms. I used our bookbinding glue to attach that. Let's take a look at those finished pages. Working backwards, this is page eight, and you can see how that palm tree charm's been attached. It's very secure. Again, the bookbinding glue here um, to attach this first before adding this. And you can also stencil the side of the page too. A stapled piece of fold and ribbon attached to the top of the tag. So you don't even need to punch the tag at all. On page seven, oh, I just love how this turned out. So you can see my stenciling in the background. I popped out of the leaf here after I fussy cut it, and then here you can see where I trimmed the V shape into the edges and added the ribbon behind it. Very lovely pages. And now we move on by sliding and stacking. So I'm gonna take the blue paper that we stenciled, pick it up, and then slide it on top of this layout here. I'm gonna remove that charm for now. Maybe I might take that out too so it doesn't make everything too bulky. Take the top orange piece, slide it over, and lay it on top of that. And now I have the base for pages five and six right in front of me. I'm going to take everything out of pocket five and six. And I do find it easiest if I hold everything in the palm of my hand. You know, it's kind of like when you're dealing a deck of cards. You don't grab a, the cards from a pile on your table. You grab them from your hand and deal them out. It's far more efficient that way. The largest piece will be placed on the right side, flush with the edge, and then the smaller piece will be placed on the left side, flush with the edge, so that um, white flower is going to be in the lower left corner. Now, across the top, I'm going to add a horizontal blue, leaving some space in between, and then this is going to go vertically over here. Now, I'm going to take a teal strip and place it right up against the trimmed pieces, I have a name for this basic layout. Is, I call it the 5-7 split. So I take any printed 12 by 12, trim it at 7 inches, put the 7 inch piece on one side and the 5 inch piece on the other, and then I use this paper ribbon, I call it, to sort of transition from the printed area to the plain area. This piece runs across the middle with the photo mats above and below. Keeping it really simple now, I have the elements from the collage print that I can line up in a film strip style in the remaining orange opening here and then the tag for journaling will go on the left and the tropical vibe will go on the right now let me show you some finishing touches with the finished pages here now i took my craft knife and the cutting mat and i just cut a notch into this little tag here it's not a tag it's just a cut apart um it's about a 16th of an inch wide it it matches the width of the ribbon too and then sixteenths of an inch, just a tiny little piece out of there, enough to thread the ribbon through. Then I uh, attached it here with foam adhesive and then taped the ends around to the back. A simple, elegant way to use ribbon. Here we have it done. So I'd like to follow things through, added the charm here with the glue, and then added the notch to the tag and wrapped the ribbons around to the back as well. A great finishing touch. Keeps uh, it lump free because if you tie a knot, and sometimes this organza ribbon, I'm not a fan of knotting it or tying it into bows, but it looks really beautiful when stretched across the page like that. Okay, so that was a nice easy one. I'm going to slide the orange over on top of the layout next to it and then pick this up. I'm maybe going to go vertical with it, meaning that the lines or the texture will be vertical. And then turn to the previous page in our instructions. So we're on page three looking at the bottom, layouts three and four grab everything out of the pocket. There's going to be a lot in this pocket. I'm going to pick everything up and try to hold it in my hand so I can deal it out more easily. We have a lot to deal. <laughs> okay, so let's take this really skinny strip that matches the print on the right, and that goes flush with the bottom. And I like to consider this side almost like a puzzle. Everything puzzles in quite beautifully. The other portion of the print goes directly flush along the top, almost making this feel like you have two prints, but we're really using one and then some portions of another. Okay, now across the bottom, I'm going to add this decorative element, but in between it, I'm going to place one of these teal quarter inch strips just to incorporate that color in that area here. So all three of these pieces get adhered very close together. 
Across the top then I'll add the Paradise Found flush with the previous piece. Now this opening that created is left magic. It's the exact height required for my two vertical mats and you can see the margin is about an eighth of an inch. It's, I mean it just fits so beautifully. Um, to the left of that, well, I'm not going to worry about that right now. Let's move to the right side of the layout. I'm going to nest uh, this teal piece with the orange strip just to add some color to match. And we have a horizontal mat right here. How about that? This can go directly next to it. And then we have all of these teal pieces and some cut aparts left. So many pieces of teal paper. It's just kind of crazy. Um, the largest square. It's going to go in the middle here and nest with this larger journaling prompt. Above it, there should be another rectangle that fits the black. This is my happy place perfectly. That's three and three quarter inches high. This is four and a quarter. And then look for a piece that matches um, just another day in paradise. Look at that. It just fits right on there. So nice. So these kind of live over here. This is what the spot where I use the gold or the silver parrot charm, which I have here somewhere. Here he is. He's going to go here, kind of hanging in the trees. <laughs> then below this, this green, I have two medium sized of the remaining. These are larger pieces that puzzle in there beautifully too. Then two smaller squares will go to the left and the very smallest should fit your aloha perfectly you can staple some ribbon to the edge of that and he goes here and once you fussy cut the uh parakeet he can be placed right here make sure when you attach it though you keep adhesive away from anything that overlaps a photo mat so you can take your photo in there later now for finishing touches on this one you can see the little parrot added. He's really cute hanging out there. Everything else is just assembled easily without any further embellishment, and it still looks fabulous. Now on this left page, I stapled a piece of folded ribbon and mounted this with foam adhesive. There's my fussy cut. Notice I just kind of have that branch sort of hanging out on the edge of this piece. It looks like he's perched there. And then this is a three-part bow with an extra loop, so you can call it a four-part bow. I have a whole series on how to create uh, different, how to use ribbons in your pages, and that's this bow is covered in that video series. And I'll put the link on the bottom of the screen right now, so you, if you want to look that up, you can, and learn more about how I use ribbon in my pages. But for now, we are going to um, slide, and we've already arrived, believe it or not. I think this is layout one and two. Okay, so the arrangement here is going to be this larger white flower will be in the lower left corner of the right side of our layout. And we'll empty everything from pocket one and two. This is the last of the trimmed pieces. I, I began by doing some stenciling using the same technique I showed you earlier along the left edge with the masking stencil. And, and this time I used... You could use the white ink again, it would be beautiful. But I used our moss green ink. It's a, it's a lovely green shade. All right, so we've got this nice larger strip. I love how it carries through the design from the right side of the layout. Now, the black mats do a really gorgeous job of just sort of setting off the teal. So I'm gonna take two horizontal black pieces and line them up here. And I've got a horizontal one just up a little higher on this side. Um, as long as I can see it, I've got this teal strip, or we nesting with sandy toes and sun-kissed nose. Across the bottom, beneath this, I know we're covering up some of this gorgeous art, but we can't help it. I'm going to have a row of three squares, and then that just goes right above it. At some point, you got to cover the art, because these are scrapbook pages. <laughs> and then tuck that right in there. And now we can layer the remaining teal mats on top of the black ones. Up top, we're going to add a square. And then the toucan, we should be able to nest with another teal piece that fits right in there beautifully. And when this is placed, it's the same width as the pieces below it, which I love. Then we have our little fussy cut, which will be fussy cut toucan. Now you can go any way you want with this. You could leave a little white border around him to kind of make it pop off the page, or you can trim right up to the wing color. 
and then I even used a craft knife on mine. So I really fussy cut this. You don't have to do that. Just keep it simple if you like. And then pop dot it so it, it, it pops up on the page a little bit. And he's going to go right there. Down in the lower left, I added... You'll see on your instruction image, there's this piece of teal. It is not paper. It is ribbon. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut a length, about 14 inches of the teal satin. And that's going to be just adhered next to that. And then these really cool silk leaves here. Now I've got one kind of coming up this way. I did allow him to go across the edge and I used my ATG adhesive to a place, put that in place. It worked great. This is going to go here next to the toucan, which is kind of nifty. Once this is all assembled, again, take your uh, paper, bring it to your trimmer, flip it over so you can see from the back how much is sticking out. Just chop that off. This cuts just like paper. The same thing is true for up here. I had this kind of off the edge a little bit, and um, it just sort of added to the whole tropical feel of the artwork happening here. And I loved it. I loved it in that spot. I added a few more pieces of ribbon to this. Um, and I think that's about it. So let's take a look at the, the layouts here. I've got page two. Oh, this is, I think this is probably one of my favorite pages in the whole set of eight. Love how that's coming off the edge there. Again, just flipped it over and then cut. It slices like a piece of paper. And there's my pretty highly fussy cut toucan. I tied three uh, satin ribbons around the edge of this border strip before I attached it to the layout. Then on the left... Here's my finished page, everything all adhered, the ribbon running across just loosely, and then this uh, piece also trimmed from the edge. You can see the moss stenciling just adds a little bit of dimension and depth to this layout. Finally, I finished with a basic bow, also covered in my Ribbon Basics video, and then attached that with a glue line. I know a lot of you do like to, to um, hear about which adhesives I use. I basically stick with my ATG my um, cellophane tape basically or you can also use washi tape on the for adhering ribbon to the back of your pages and then I use my glue lines the final type of adhesive I love using is our foam adhesive circles these work great I often cut them in half preserving a tab on each side so I can just easily peel off the backing and attach my item to the page with a little just a little dimension you can see they're very Pretty low profile, which is one of the things I like about our foam adhesive circles. So if you don't have those, go ahead and pick some up next time you are shopping at clubscrap.com. Now, if you are not yet a member of Club Scrap and you've watched this whole project go down, you're like, oh my goodness, I need to give this a try. It's a great time to join us at Club Scrap. We'd love to have you as a member of our family. And a membership is a great value, always includes the instruction, printable, and this video workshop. So come and learn with us, come join us. This is a place where anyone can shop, but members always save. So I hope you'll, you'll give us a try if you haven't already. And I look forward to seeing you soon in my Tropical card making class. We have cards and pages every month. So come and join me for the Tropical card kit workshop. I'll see you there.